All right, so I'm going to bring in some lighter thread again. I'm thinking at this point about introducing some circles, some yellow circles as, you know, the sort of stars in the sky, rather large looking stars. But uh, I'm just going to introduce them and see how they look. I'm not sure what size I'll do or anything like that yet. Um, and I'm going to bring in some silk from this side. And some of the lighter cotton from this side. And I'll just do those a little bit before I put some yellow in. Tucking in the tails. I wanted to build up just a little bit of lighter color, a bit more lighter color, um, before I introduce my yellow there. All right, so thinking about my yellow here, I've got some hand dyed alpaca and it's a light worsted weight. And I'm thinking that I'll make a little circle about here. So just introducing it into this shed. I'm just gonna go under one warp thread at this stage. I wanna make it small at the bottom so that I can build it up to look a bit more like a circle. It doesn't have to look like a circle, it can just look like a, a mass or a small area of yellow. And then I will take the silk back and I'll take my blue back, my light blue, and then I've got my yellow. I'm gonna take it under two warp threads this time. So I'm starting to build something there. Okay, um, perhaps if I decide what I'm going to do with my yellow first this time. So I'm going to go underneath this warp thread and underneath two and then bring it out of the shed again there and see how that goes. I'm bringing my blue in to meet up with it. That's my blue silk and this is my blue cotton. Smush them all down. And then I might just spend a moment or two building this yellow up a little more. Changing sheds. I don't want to make it huge. It's just a little little thing at the moment and yeah I think that's enough so I'm going to take that one down at the back and I'll cut off the excess at the back 
Another thing that I really wanted to try was just to add a little bit of sparkle in with that. I don't know if it'll work, but I'll find out. So I can bring that sparkle in. It might be that the sparkle is too small to sort of show very much. But we'll see. Alright, shed down. Now I'm going to take my blues back to the edges. There goes my fork. I'll grab that in a minute. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the sparkle, just, which is fine because I don't want it to be too much anyway. Now what I'm going to do is take the, the blue cotton all the way over so that it encases the yellow there. Sort of squashes it in a bit and then on the way back I want to take the silk so I've just swapped their sides just for something a little bit different Alright, so now I'm going to bring my cotton over a fair way, more than half, and bring the silk in to meet up with it. And then we'll have that sort of interesting visual Then we'll have that interesting sort of visual that the colours have swapped sides. Take those colours back. Oh, I quite like that. This time I think I'll just bring this lighter blue to here. Um, I want to bring, make the silk come across a little bit more on this particular pick. back again okay I like the way that's looking uh, I'm going to put in another row of my 8-2 gold because I want that to sort of carry up to show that we're going on to something a little bit different now like down here was the foreground up here is the sky and I sort of want that to be somewhat obvious tuck the tails in
and then I'm going to send some of this cotton across oh wrong shed should be in the down shed yeah oh, I'm just trying to get around my edge thread there when you swap sides with your colors you might find that some of the edge threads you'll have to go around manually that's what I'm doing there And I'm going to send that all the way back to the other side. Oh, I love those. I love that combination of gold and yellow and the blues there. So trying to maintain the curves that I wanted. I think I'm going to go ahead and build up this darker blue here a little more again um, just because I like it and I really like the way the gold looks when it's sort of embedded in there I think I'll bring the silk back in a moment but just wanted to build this up a little bit. I'm actually running out of this dyed cotton so I'm hoping I've got more in my stash but I think that I probably have. And then I'm going to think about doing my next yellow section or my next star. I'm not sure exactly where that should be. But obviously I don't want to do another star like over right on top of this one because it's going to be crowding too much. So I probably want to do one maybe over here, maybe over here. I'm not really sure. But I do like the idea of having my crescent moon on the right hand side like it is in the painting. So I'll try to, I'll try to work things so that I can do it on the right hand side. If you've made it through the videos to this point and you're still watching, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I just think it's such a huge blessing that I can sit here doing something that I absolutely love and that I can share it and people like you are interest, interested enough to watch it. It means so much to me, seriously. Thank you. My only wish is that you were here with me to really see these colours because it's quite exciting. The camera never, never quite represents the colours in the way that I can see them here. Oh, just loving that gradation in there. I'm nearly done with this one. I've built that mound up a little bit more and I'm happy with it now. Let's just build it a little bit more. Lovely. Getting those curves back again. I'll end that thread just for now but it will be back provided I have some in my stash which I'll have to go and check but I'm confident because you know as I said my stash is extensive all right I'm going to bring the silk across now bring that back in because it's just so pretty
and think about my next little bit of yellow. I think I will use that same alpaca again. It's quite lovely. It's very fluffy. It's extremely soft. It's baby alpaca actually. Um, and I actually use this to knit a dress for one of my girl's dolls um, quite some time ago and um, it's so gorgeous. I'm just going to bring that in one weft thread under and then I'm going to shoot the silk back about to where it is where the yellow is that is we'll do a little more so go under uh, I'll go under one but it's right next to the other one and I'll send this silk back in the other direction I just stopped to advance my warp a little there. I was running out of room, so make sure you do the same if you need to or when you need to. And I'm bringing my star back under. under that warp thread again. This time I'm going to take this opportunity to put a little bit of sparkle in at this point and then I can even double it up a little bit if I want to. I do think the sparkle works. It's nice to have it in there. Okay so that's that shot. And then I'm going to twine it around a little bit um, just to make it a little more obvious. It's very fine. But see, some of it's sitting on top of the wool now, so it's more visible. And that's kind of what I wanted, not to be standing out completely, but just to be a little more visible. I just want that little bit of sparkle in there so I'm going to pop that behind now. Happy with that, no problem. Alright, and I'm also happy with that star. I don't really want it to be bigger than that. I do want the stars to be a bit small and then make a bit more of a highlight of the moon. Now I've got that in there. I'm going to take this right through and squish that star in there. All right, go back with the silk again. And the methods that I'm using in this tapestry are not all that conventional um, as in I'm just making it up as I go along um, I'm not I'm not very serious about following any particular rules I'm just doing what works if you are interested in more conventional tapestry I have a tapestry for rigid heddle loom class it's an online class and I'll leave the link to that down below and you can check that out if you're interested and you learn all of the traditional tapestry techniques um, but it's just on a rigid heddle loom instead of a tapestry loom. And I personally love to explore all types of tapestry and the more variation the better in my opinion. All right, I'm really liking this lighter blue silk. 
and the way that it's making this look more like a sky um, what I might do is bring in a little bit of my darker cotton again because um, I like the streaks as well the streaks make it look more like a sky a streaky kind of sky and I like that and I think I will do another shot of gold in a minute not the sparkly gold but the other tensile that I was using down below just to give that uh, movement and feeling of stars I'm just going to do a couple more to build up a little bit of extra blue dark blue over here So what are you thinking at this point? You're thinking you've got enough stash yarns to give something like this a go? As I said, your inspiration can come from anywhere. You might find a photo on the internet that has beautiful colours in it. Um, you might go and look at some of your favourite paintings. You might go for a walk and find your colours in nature. Anything can inspire this sort of tapestry. And then it's just a matter of seeing what you've got. As far as your stash yarns go. All right. I think now's the time to bring my gold in. Just noticed that I didn't cut the tail of my silk, but that's okay. I think I'll carry it up the side. It's not too far. Um, probably better if I don't have yarn carried up the side but it's better than leaving a, a cut edge I'm going to actually double up my gold this time uh, I'm not going to do a double pig so I'm not doing two in one oh wrong shed it should be in the up shed I'm going to do two picks on different sheds so this is going to be my first one. Move my tail to tuck in there. And then on this second shed, I'm going to do another. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to carry that across all the way. Just for fun. And I'll see what that looks like smooshed down. I'm going to take it back as well. That's oh, pretty. So I'm going to keep weaving with that just on this side to make it a little bit thicker. Um, and just because I haven't done that yet, I've only used it as a single pick. So that once again introduces something different. It's often nice in a tapestry too if you are introducing a new colour or a new yarn to just do one shot of it somewhere and then as you go on you've already introduced it so the eye gets used to it and then you can have a thicker shot of it somewhere else. It just seems to work better. I guess that's what you would call tying in wouldn't you? It ties in rather than just being a random band of new colour somewhere. Okay, I'm going to tuck the tail in there. Done with that gold for now. And I think it's time, hmm, I think it's time for 
maybe um, some of this cotton that I'm nearly run out of the blue one that I've been using here already and then maybe I'll try a little bit of grey I'm not going to take this all the way across either. It's so freeing to just make decisions on the loom as you go according to what your eyes seeing at the time. It's a very different way of weaving and it's it's nice to be able to do it at least sometimes. finish off with that blue for now. Now um, I've got this I've got this feather yarn but I don't see it working but you know what I'm gonna try one piece. If it doesn't work no worries but my um, gut instinct is that it won't work don't use it but I've been proven wrong a couple of times in this project by doing that. So I don't know. So I'll just give it a try. Hmm. Guess what? I don't like it. <laughs> it's coming out. Goodbye. That's fine. At least I tried it. You know, I think it wouldn't look bad if it was uh, maybe at the bottom of a piece or the top of a piece to sort of finish off with. But on its own like that, nah, it doesn't work. 